Obviously, as you've noticed, this video does not have any theme music to it, besides the intro, simply because this is a very sad video. I just want to get a disclaimer out that this video is very, 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 very sad. So if you don't like sad videos, I suggest you leave the video. With that out of the way, on with the video. This is... Born to a muggle father and a witch mother, Severus Snape grew up very, very poor. And his parents fought a lot, which is why he and he just could not wait till he was 11 before he could go to Hogwarts. Snape's house lived a girl named Lily Evans, and he watched over her. She was a witch, and he revealed himself to her. And when he told her that she was a witch, not knowing what that meant, considering she was muggle-born, she took offense to it. And he called Petunia, her sister, a muggle. Though she didn't know what it meant, she could sense that, that tone. The two sisters left with a huff. As time went by, Snape and Lily became very, 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 very close. He told her all about the Wizarding World, Hogwarts, Dementors, Ministry of Magic, Underage, Sorcery, yada, yada, yada. And a few incidents happened to where Lily was mad at Snape. And on the train to Hogwarts, they met a boy named James Potter. Now, Snape really wanted Lily, Lily to be in Slytherin. But once they got to Hogwarts and they were sorted into their houses, she was sorted into Gryffindor with James. Snape was obviously put into, put into Slytherin on the exact opposite side of the room. Something that Snape dreaded. James, as well as Sirius Black, Remus Lupin, and Peter Pettigrew all hung out together and bullied Snape by calling him Snivellus. And when S Snape was confronted by Lily about his group of friends using black magic, well not black magic, dark magic, he was just like, oh really? Then what about Potter and his mates? They do, sh they do stuff like that all the time. They pull stuff like that. They break rules, they sneak out. And the thing is, Lupin would sneak out every month because he was a werewolf. He would go through the sh Shrieking Shack and have a transformation so that way he doesn't harm anyone. Snape got curious and followed him one night, and then James saved his life. And Snape really, really hated James and refused to admit that James saved his life. And he was pissed off that he was in James's debt. And one incident as you actually see in a flashback in Order of the Phoenix, James ambushed Snape at a tree when he was reading. James and Sirius make fun of Snape for his nose and his clothes and all that. And Lily says to them basically just to leave Snape alone. And he said, and J James says, Hey, if you want me to live alone forever, go out with me. And she said that she'd rather go out with a squid from the Great Lake. And while James was distracted, 
Snape got out his wand and threw Sectum Sempra at him. Which resulted in a scar on James's face that spat out blood. And and James lifted Snape up upside down that showed off his graying underpants. Everyone was laughing at him and Lily told James, put him down, put him down. He's like, as you wish, he lifted him up higher and then dropped down on the ground. Snape grabbed his wand, but then Sirius stunned him, making it un making him unable to move. And then Lily told him to remove the curse, and when they did, they told Snape, You're lucky Evans was here, Snape. And then Snape says this horrible thing that really hurt. Lily's feelings. Later he begged her for forgiveness, but she explained that she had been making excuses for him for years. And she was just done with it. And then Snape didn't see Lily much over the years. And then he overheard a conversation with Sybil Trelawney, which is the uh, teacher and president of Azkaban that is behind, you know, like all the fortunes. She was talking to Dumbledore about a prophecy of a boy born at the end of July that would be the downfall of Lord Voldemort. Snape, at that point being a Death Eater, reported the prophecy to Voldemort. And Snape was, was devastated to hear that Voldemort had a feeling that it was, that it was Lily's son. And he immediately went to Dumbledore and begged, begged Dumbledore to hide them. Lily and James put their trust in Peter Pettigrew, who betrays them, gives up their, their location to Voldemort, and when Snape learns of Lily's death, according to the books, he looked like a man who had lived a hundred years of misery. And then, that was the breaking point for Snape. That's when he decided that he couldn't trust Voldemort. And he would spy on Voldemort for Dumbledore. And remember how I said that James saved Snape's life? In the Sorcerer's Stone, during the Quidditch match, when he saves Harry, that was only, only to make him and James even. So that he can go back to hating James and his memory in peace. And over the years he continued to mistreat Harry. And then in the events of the Half-Blood Prince He was summoned by Dumbledore to his office. A Horcrux that Dumbledore had destroyed cursed him. Oh crap. Anyway. And Dumbledore asked him how much longer he, ha he has to live. Snape says, maybe a year. And he says, this, and Dumbledore says to Snape, "We all know that the Draco, Ma that the Malfoy boy is planning on killing me. You must kill me. You must be the one to kill me, Severus." Considering that he was going to die in a year anyway, and he does just that as a perfect cover up.
to make the other Death Eaters believe that Snape is an active Death Eater, is loyal to no one but Voldemort. And then after Dumbledore's death, when Harry confronts him outside of Hagrid's house, calling him a coward, a coward, Snape had risked everything for Harry. He was the furthest thing from a coward. After that night, he began to speak to Dumbledore's portrait and the events of the events of the, the Deathly Hallows Part 1 from the fake Harry's that was all part of Dumbledore's plan and Snape hid the real sword of Gryffindor and in the forest where Harry finds the sword, the Patronus, the Silver Doe, that was Snape. He was told to go to that forest in secret and not be seen due to a skill known as Aquamancy that both Dumbledore and not, not Dumbledore, Snape and Voldemort both were very skilled at basically reading your mind where we see that flashback from the tree and Order of the Phoenix. Just in case, don't, just in case Voldemort read Harry's mind and saw Snape helping him, blowing his cover. And the, at the Battle of Hogwarts, In the Shrieking Shack, Voldemort calls Snape, and that's when Voldemort kills him. Harry reveals himself after Dumbled after Voldemort leaves, and looks down on the dying man before him, the man that he hated for killing Dumbledore. According to the books, the green eyes met the black eyes. And as memories poured out of Snape, Harry puts those memories in a flask. That's when Harry learned the truth. That Snape was truly a good man. That loved his mother and cared about him enough, cared about him enough to risk everything, even his own life, to protect. When looking at Snape, you know that his story is a tragic one. I made this video because throughout my childhood, I hated Snape. Especially after Half Blood Prince. And what makes his story even sadder is his, his actor, Alan Rickman, passed away two and a half years ago. He lived a life of courage, courtesy, and most importantly, his secret weapon that Voldemort could not comprehend love. I miss you and appreciate you. Goodbye, Professor.